Good evening, everyone. We're going to try again this time. This is Bead Spider Live and I'm Jermaine. I'm standing in for Matthew yet again. We thought because we had so many internet problems and website problems yesterday um, with our server that, uh, and I know the video wasn't playing well, so we thought we'd do it again. This way you can see it properly and if you've got any questions or need any help I'm here to answer them. Uh, I know yesterday the sound was fine but uh, the picture kept jerking and uh, so hopefully fingers crossed this time we'll be able to do it properly. Now we've had a really um, busy week this week. I've been we've had uh, two videos come out uh, on YouTube channel uh, with Kumihima and they're lots of fun. I've been doing them because they're um, with making a flat braid with using a round Kumihima disc so you didn't have to buy a specialist square disc to make it. So uh, I hope you've seen those. If you haven't, you can pop over to the YouTube channel or our website and they've been lots of fun. Oh, there's lots of people on. Let's have a look. Um, there's Irene, hello, and Jane. Christina, oh Sharon, hello Sharon, nice to see you, and Nina, uh, and we've got Christina, and um, is that Ruti from Israel? Welcome and hello, oh and I see Christina's from Oklahoma, how lovely, now that's on Facebook, um, I can't see the, uh, the YouTube, oh yes, from YouTube, uh, Marielle, and um, oh she loves our channel, thank you, and um, Kim, and Annette, hello everyone. So hopefully today we won't have any more website issues, but it all should be okay. But if you do have problems, please um, please let us know. But uh, some of it's a little bit out of our control, I'm afraid. I believe in London, one of the big servers has been having trouble and there's quite a lot of businesses that have been affected. So um, here's hoping the gremlins stay away for a little while. Ah, and Marielle's from New York. Wow, from the Big Apple. Hello and welcome. Right, now, I don't know if you saw Matthew's tutorial last week, but he made the beautiful waterfall earrings to show you in the booklet. And they're fabulous. Oh, yes, you can see them on the screen now. They're beautiful earrings and so versatile. Um, we have the pattern book and of course we also have a kit which includes the pattern book and Matthew's put some fantastic um, discounts and bargains for you on our website. So do pop over there and have a look. The sale for those, will we've extended it till Sunday night because we have had internet issues. So um, from now, you've still got until uh, Sunday evening our time. Um, to uh, get some of the fabulous waterfall products um, with a great discount. Now, what else have we got to talk about? What are we doing today? Well, um, <laughs> again, hopefully, I'm going to show you a bracelet that I designed uh, quite a long time ago, but I just keep going back to it because I love it. It's such a comfortable bracelet and it's so versatile. It's called the um, Atlantis bracelet and it has, uh, we have uh, six brand new colors and uh, in the kits, it's using uh, a range of um, uh, crystals and my beautiful slinky cord which I'll tell you more about later and the great thing is is the kits that we have on the website you can make three bracelets with uh, as I said we've got them in six colors that's the lovely blue one and there's a nice poison ivy I think that one's called which I rather like that name I think Matthew's girlfriend Maxine came up with that one and that one I think is starry sparkle or something like that but anyway um so now they're on fantastic offer on the website as well and uh, i think matthew's put on some great bargains there but what he's also got for you which i can show you here is anyone that does buy one of our atlantis kits uh you get 
these free patterns. There's 16 patterns that Matthew's designed so that you can make a whole range of different designs with your crystals because the kit comes with two different um, colors of crystals and you can make lots of different designs in fact someone was on yesterday and she thought what a great idea you could even do morse code messages with them which i thought that was quite clever actually um, it also comes with a little template at the bottom uh, which you can make your own so uh, thank you matthew for making those matthew had his birthday yesterday and we had a lovely um, evening last night and he had the day off and that's why I'm on here today so oh hello Annette from Rotterdam it's lovely oh and Anne from Missouri in the USA they're on YouTube uh, hello Daisy and uh, Kim and who else have we got um, and Debbie and uh, hi from Los Angeles wow we really are an international group today isn't that fabulous Okay, well, um, I suppose, oh yes, now we've got some photographs to be featured on the show, which will happen today, and uh, uh, we've got a few, and if you don't, if you would like some of your photographs shown of your work on our, um, on the show, just please email them in, uh, the to live at Beth Spider, as it says on the screen at the moment, and we can, um, we'll put them on for you. And please, if you like our channel uh, or and subscribe to it and let everybody know, that would be great. Uh, if you do subscribe, you'll get a, a newsletter, and uh, which I think there's a link in the description uh, box, and um, then you'll find out about all our um, great um tutorials that we're putting together ah patricia from malta ah hello from malta that's great okay so now these are the bracelets here now what i like about these is as you can see oh, upside down turn these up the right way um we start with a macrame base and then we branch out into sort of like a, a pseudo looming so that we can you know get lots of different patterns so um the first thing we're going to start with i'll just pop these out of the way is we've got a lovely range of um, crystal donuts now these are a three by four uh, crystal donut or some of you call them rondelles and we've got some beautiful colors and what I like about some of these is they're actually um, opaque and frosted and just really really yummy and they give a great contrast to the bracelet the next thing we'll be using is our smooth and slinky cord now this is one millimeter cord um, this it's uh, uh, good for macrame or kumihimo and it's what we've been using in the kumihimo videos um oh by the way we've got a new kumihimo video coming out tomorrow uh which is an extension of the first two and it's going to show you how to make a flat braid on a round disc but with beads this time so tune in for that that'll be uh tomorrow so um oh kim from nova scotia wow and uh derek from the scottish borders and i like scotland and uh donna from the usa hello everyone okay so now you it, this is one millimeter cord uh the difference with smooth and slinky cord i mean you can use any um cord you like really but what i like about this is it's really durable it's a polyester cord but it has a rayon coat around it which makes it very very slippy in a way but it's still very very firm and it's got a lovely sheen to it and it's very very durable um we've used them and um gone to the beach with them and they still look great and last for years now i've cut two lots of cords and they're each one and a half millimeters which that's what it says one and a half meters sorry which it says on the pattern however if you've got a small wrist you wouldn't need that much and you can see i've come with both threads up through the button this way 
and then back down that way. Uh, now with the cord, because it's one millimetre, what you can do if you're having trouble getting it through, you can paint some uh, super glue on the ends and then when it's dry hard you can cut it with your scissors to make a point to get them through but I actually fiddled about and got it through quite easily so now I've put them on and what you do to get that in the middle of your cord get all your ends put them together like so and then if you pull on the button then you know that you've got you're right in the dead center here you're right in the middle and you're ready to begin the other cord we're going to be using is this is called a high tenacity polyester it's extremely strong you can see I can really really pull on this and it's very very strong and versatile and that's why I'm using this over an ordinary beading thread it's because it is strong because if I look, if I show you along the sides of the bracelet here, this is where you get lots of wear and tear. And I remember the first time I made um, a, a wrapped bracelet and uh, I used gemstones and I used silk thinking it was going to be marvellous. And uh, I was very devastated that the silk had come away on the edges because I, I should, this edges is where the wear and tear is. So hence, I use a polyester thread, but I mean, you can use any beading thread you like. This one's slightly thicker. Now, it is a little bit like silk in that it is multi-stranded and that's what gives it its strength. So it's a little bit harder to handle. So what I do with it is... I wax it now this is a pretty hefty piece of wax but I'm sure you can or th condition your thread basically I think there are some other different brands of thread conditioner and what I do is I literally just hold the thread and then run it through just like that now what this does is it stops it from raveling it behaves itself because because this is stranded like a silk thread any of you who've done pearl knotting will know that the silk has a mind of its own and it ravels especially when you're going back and forward so by doing this it makes it a little bit tacky but the best thing about that is it helps you with your tension and this is a great tip for any beading that you do it helps you with your tension and it just makes that cord behave itself so i'm just running my fingers through and now i've got a nice good piece of cord as well so I'll just put that to one side for now and uh, uh, Jamie's come from um hang on they're asking me it says I asked you if they like the later time slot oh okay Matthew's sent me a little message from his home and he said what do you think of this later time slot um I actually don't mind it I've had dinner and I'm sitting down having a bit of a relax and it's not too bad at all um so Jamie's here from Oregon hi Jamie now I'm going to start off I'm going to be using a macrame board uh, to do my work on to start you if you don't have a macrame board don't worry you can pin your work to a bead mat the other thing you um, also can do is I thought about it the other day is if you have an old picture frame you could always uh, put bulldog clips either side of your picture frame and um, you know like take everything out and just have the frame and put bulldog clips either side and put your work on that but what I'm going to do is I've made myself a little loop of um, um, cord and then I'm just going to pop that under there and then put my button through and pull that up there right oh we've got someone from Ghana here wow hello thank you for coming right now what I've got here is I've got my button secure and I'm going to just bring this down to the bottom if you see here and secure that there like that 
and then I've got my two threads. Now the two middle threads are going to be called my uh, working, my sorry, my base cord. And these two here are my working cords. And we're going to start off doing some macrame, just ordinary square knots. So the, the way to do that, if you've not done it before, I'll go through it slowly once for those of you that don't know. Um, I'm going to make like a, a four shape or a back to front D and it's over the base cord. Then I'm going to bring up the other one and I'm going to put it underneath and all these cords and up. And then you see, now you see there I've got like a little smiley mouth. Then you know you've done it right if you make a smiley mouth and then pull it up nice and tight. Then the other side of that knot to make this permanent is you do the opposite on the other side. So this size we do a D. Again, this is over the base cord, come up over the tail here, and then bring your cord under all of them and then up through the middle here. And then when you pull it up again, you can check, oh yes, I have a smiley mouth. And then when you pull it up, pull it nice and tight. Now we're going to do this area here. You can do as little or as many of these knots as you like. And this is how you can adjust the size of your bracelet very easily. Because obviously if you want lots of crystals and not too much, you can uh, do a small amount, you can do a really long amount, it's really up to you. I find I do about, you know, a couple of centimetres or an inch worth, just so I can, um, you know, have a little bit here at the back of my wrist. So I'll just continue on and do a few. Now, if you forget, like if you know, I'm chatting to you and you forget where you're at, what you do is you see here on this side, there's a little loop. Now, then I know, I'll just bring it down a bit so you can see, this little loop just here, just bring it in a bit closer so you can see. There we go. Right, so see how we've got a loop, so they, like an alternate, there was a loop up there and now there's a loop down here. When the loop's on this side, then I know that this is where I'm going to be, have to do my next, my next loop on top. So it's an easy way to remember. And see, notice how I'm pulling quite firmly between them because then I can make sure I've got a nice firm knot happening. The nice thing about this thread, do you remember I said to you it was really well, we, smooth and slinky, is because even though I've been pulling this really tight, if I want to, I can just pull it back on itself. Look at that. And I pull it apart and look at that. There's no marks whatsoever. So if I make a mistake, it doesn't matter that I can undo it and redo it and undo it and redo it and it doesn't matter. So it's, it's a great durable cord. So now let's see how many of these we've done. Now I see we've got lots and lots of new people with us today. It's probably because we're on a different time slot. So if you've never seen us before, please, or oh, what have I done here? Please don't forget to, um, you know, to like and subscribe us so that then you'll be notified whenever we do any of these um, tutorials. Okay, now let's just have a count of this. So if we look under here, I've got one, two, three, four, five on this side. One, two, three, four. I'll just do a couple more and then, we'll, then we can start adding our beads. One and two. Okay, right. So now we're going to start as if we're looming. So if I look, come down to the bottom of the board, 
you can see, yes, if I just separate these two, and then the two cords that I were knotting with, I'm going to also bring down here. So again, you would just either pin them to the bottom of your mat or use your, um, uh, you know, a bulldog clip. Uh, I'm going to bring in my thread and I've got some beads. I'm going to be using the some of this gorgeous, um, I think I've got some of it here, yes. Here we go. This lovely blue and this gorgeous, um, it's sort of a champagne, but it's it's semi um, clear, semi transparent. It's got an AB coat, and this one, of course, is just um, a lovely um, opaque, beautiful crystals. So I'm going to be using these from one of our kits, and uh, now the best thing we can do is we can work out um, what pattern to do. So let's have a look. I've got all my different patterns here that Matthew's designed. The nice thing is, is they're all simple and easy to make. Um, what one shall we do today? Maybe, or oh, maybe this little vertical stripey one. So now if you've never read one of these patterns, I'll just explain that to you. You've got your pictures here and you've got your your numbers or your letters here so um, as you can see we've got the two different colors which we'll call B and then we've got A so that's B B and A and then of course the next one is B A A B A A so they're very easy to read and we're going to start with the first one and of course you can start from left or right it's really up to you I'm going to start here so therefore we need a B a B and an A so we will call the blue B and the champagne A. So that's B and that's A. And we need to start with two Bs and an A. So we'll come back to that in a moment. So we've got to get our thread attached. Now I've got my needle with my waxed thread. And I'm going to just pop it underneath here on the first cord. Now this pattern pack, don't forget, if you buy any of our Atlantis kits, you do get that for free. So you've got, I think it's 16 patterns or 15 patterns and one blank. So you can make your own. So now I'm just going to tie a knot here and I'm just going to go through once and then twice. And then I'm just going to the little tie now you see I've left a tail here of about um, six inches or so which I think is about 18 centimeters and I will use this to tie off and um, later on I'll just pop that out of the way and you can just leave it loose or stick it up there so now I'm all ready to begin so what was in our pattern I'll just put my beads over this side here excuse me a minute okay so I need according to this I need two uh, B and one A so that will be two blues and a champagne so I shall just pick up two B's and an A on my needle here we go and then what we're going to do is just as if we were looming, um, I will pop this underneath all my base cords and bring my thread along. Once I've got them under, now the first row, the very first row is a little bit fiddly, but after that it's really quite quick and easy. So we'll just bring them underneath and then I'm going to pull my thread through. Okay. So we go over here, under. I, I usually, as you see, I'm doing, I'm holding them down, um, holding the threads down with my needle, um, with my fingers, sorry. And then you can go over, under, over, under. Come on, last one. Over, under. And just be careful you don't get um, go through these particular threads either. 
So through we go. That's a bit better now you're behaving yourself. So hold your threads and just pull them through. Now what I do is I always hold the bottom thread because then I can bring it up into position. And then I always keep my hand inside the loop as well because as you're pulling through, you don't want this to get caught up and raveled in a knot. So you just pop it through. So there we go. So now I'll just push it up into place close to where this knot is. Now the nice thing is because I've used waxed cord and I've put quite a good amount of wax on it, this beads are nice and firmly in place. Now sometimes you get a little bit of wax coming off, but that's okay. That just comes off later. All right. So now the next row. So now we've got a B, an A, and an A, a B, an A, and an A. You can see it's a very easy pattern. So uh, the B is the blue. So I get one blue and then two of the champagne, one and two. And I just pop my needles underneath. And then now the other key, the other key to having success is keep your finger just in this loop. I sort of hold one finger on the bead so they don't move. And if you can see, I've got my other finger inside the loop that's coming up. Now that stops it from getting all caught and raveled. So then when I finally pull it up all the way through, put it up into position. And then I can hold it down with my fingers here. And then again, I'm coming from under here going up over the cord over this over this cord it's very sort of like do an up and down motion like a um like you're on a, on the waves over and through over and through and you can see here that my needle is over the threads and it's not catching them and it's now again pulling it up and then we're going to pull this up and then through Okay, so what do you think of this little pattern so far? It's quite a nice little pattern actually. I'll do one or two more rows and then I'll show you how to finish off. So we've got two A's and a B, so that's two champagne, one, two, and a blue. And I made um, Matthew's pavlova yesterday morning and uh, he didn't know it was a surprise. And I actually bought him, I thought it was a great present. I went and I bought him for his birthday a, um, um, a pear tree. I've just got to get that rocking motion up and down, up and down up and down don't get caught on your thread there we go naughty beads okay here we go now see how i'm pulling on this until right up to the end and then i can get a nice firm now at this point too i could also bring these cords in a little bit closer to make it a little bit easier there we go. Uh, Kim asked, could you use leather cord? Well, yes, Kim, you can. You absolutely can. Um, it would have to be quite fine if you wanted to do the macrame. You might not do the macrame at this point or just a little bit of it, not so much. It's not quite so versatile for changing the length. But if the cord was fine enough, you probably could. Right, now let's see. I'll do one more row, hopefully without any problems, and then I'll show you how to finish it off. So we've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I'm up here. Uh, so we have one blue. And is that right? No, one champagne, I beg your pardon, and two blue. And champagne to blue. Do, does anyone else have any other questions that you might like me to, to answer for you? 
See, now notice I'm keeping my finger inside the loop so that the loop goes up easily. Then I could just pop those beads in place. See, as you get further down, it gets much easier. And I hold this down. So remember, the rocking motion is good. So I'm going up and down. That's it. And then down again to go into that bead. Yep. And then down and up again. What you can also do is if you want to is you can put your fingers underneath it like I'm doing here and then that way you can literally pop those beads up above the thread and see how it's much easier to do that see how that went through so much easier so there's just a few little tips for you to stop you having trouble now I'll show you have um, I'll show you how to finish it off and um because and then i'll show you how to finish off the other side so we'll pretend that this is oh donna's asking me when did i start beading do you know donna it's a funny story i um i did my first little beaded um necklace from um sun-dried pumpkin seeds and um i made this really lovely um i made this really lovely um little necklace and uh got eaten by a rodent so that was my first foray into beading so it uh, didn't deter me though i carried on i carried on and when i wanted to start learning bead weaving interestingly enough i um there was nothing in australia at all and uh, I, there was one company doing a class, and I'll continue the story. I'll just show you what I'm doing here. I'm just going to go um, under the thread, and then I'm going to go through here and just make a few knots. In fact, I'll take it off the thing here. So we're going to pretend that this is a really long bracelet. Um, uh, yes, and I, I booked this class, and I had to wait months for it to get into this class, and it was about two hours drive from my home so you see what i'm doing here is i'm just going to go through here and make some knots and we're pretending that this is the last row and um i turned up at the class finally and you know and i had to leave home really early in the morning and um it was the shop was the size of a shoebox and there was a little table in the middle of it and there sat at the table were my two fellow classmates one was seven and the other one was about nine years of age and me at that point i really did consider going home but i thought i've left so early in the morning and i've come so far i'm going to stay and i'm going to learn how to do this bead weaving class um so i didn't have great great experiences in the beginning but i did keep persevering now i'm just going to do a knot here did you notice i went under the thread and i've got a loop and then i'm just going to put my needle through that loop and then i can just pull it up pull it up pull it up and make a knot and then i can go on through the next bead um vivian's asking is this cord the same as rat tail you can use rat tail but it's definitely not rat tail is quite um it's quite a spongy cord and you if you look very closely under a microscope you can see all the fibers it's not as durable this is um a polyester cord with a rayon coating which means that you can um it's it's much more durable and it's it's lovely to work with so you can see there i've just done another knot so basically all you do here is you go back and forth doing knots and um and then you finished it off now i've got a bracelet that i made earlier and in fact the question that you just asked vivian this will be very interesting for you uh where's my bracelet that i made earlier here it is if any of you watched the video yesterday you'll see that i demonstrated how to finish off on this bracelet and you saw that i had done all the knots and all the macrame now look i've undone the lot and look at my cords and that's the difference because these cords are 
have no kinky marks and I can I undid the whole thing and now I'm going to show you again on the same bracelet so I think that explains quite nicely why I like this cord okay so but you know if that's all you've got is rat tail that's fine you can still do that method with this okay so now to finish off so we've done all of our um our length of um, crystals and we've got this one's got a nice sort of like a chevron pattern and I'm going to now I need to make this side the same as this side so that's what we're going to do so to do that I need to put my two middle cords as the base cord here and then I've got my two working cords. Now, this first row is very important. So we're going to do it exactly the same way. Um, but I'm going to do it a lot looser. So again, putting this over the base cords, this over the tail, this underneath, just like before. And then I'm going to pull it up. But I'm going to keep it reasonably loose and I'll come in a little bit closer so you can see that if you like just give me a second there we go right so you can see how I've kept that um, quite loose so which of the patterns did you have any of you actually looked at the patterns which pattern did you like the better um, um, let me see I've got some other nice ones here this one's just like a little dotty pattern. Um, this one, what's this one? Well, this one's the same, I think. No, this one's more of an angle. This one's more of a dotty. The one I was working on yesterday that I didn't get to finish, actually, I was doing this little um, uh, cross pattern. Uh, what else have I got? Well, of course, you could just do it plain. You've got 16 different patterns to choose from. So um, it's great to so do. Uh, um, the nice thing, what you can do, actually, is you could make with your kit two plain ones and using just the plain crystals. And then you can use the other two crystals to, um, to make uh, a patterned one. Or you could make three different patterns. Um, you get... Um, you get this free, you get all these patterns for free when you buy the um, Atlantis bracelet, any of them at all. Now, okay, so just come back into here. You can see that this is um, quite loose and we need to keep that loose because you don't look, if I pull it tight, see how it bunches everything up. So I'm just going to keep this first one quite loose. Then when I go over to the other side, it's normal. I can then just go under here and now I can tighten it up. Now you see that's kept that loose and then um, it's tightened it. So I'm just going to go, oh, Deborah's just joined us. Hello from Florida. Hi, Deborah. Thank you for joining us. Now I'm just going to keep on with these. Um, knots and I need to make it the same as this end so while I'm doing that um, is there anybody else that's new that's here please say hello and tell me where you're from and I'll just carry on getting this finished so I can show you how to finish off just try and read here I see Matthew's replying to a lot of your questions. Now, did I just make a mistake then? Ah, look at that. See, I was too busy reading and I went the wrong way, but I knew straight away. So I can undo it. And I'll just come out a slightly bit wider so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my loop on that side and then I can just continue on. So does anyone got a favorite color of the little demo pieces that I've got here? I actually, my favorite is actually, interestingly enough, the Poison Ivy. 
I just think that's so pretty, those colours. It's such a pretty green in there. What colours do you like? Let me think. There's purple. There's the blue. This is the champagne that comes with the blue. Oh, and we've got the, the nice black and silver one. So here we go. So now I need to do six of these to match the loops on the side. There we go. So now Matthew's given some great bargains on these kits um, today. He's uh, been, I think he's got that you can buy any three um, and you get a really big discount off them. I'm not sure, maybe Matthew, if you're listening or if you're there, you can, I'm not quite sure. Oh, there they are. Any three for 25 otherwise they're 10 each so that's a great saving so there they all are up on the website there yeah so that's the blue one and that's the poison ivy that i like i really like those greens and the black and white that's a great one you know what i like about these because you can wear them day and night it's um it's something that you can you know you can wear to the beach and be a little bit sparkly on the beach um but then you can wear them at some um, at night and um, you can just go straight out and they look great now I'm just what I'm doing here is I'm counting my loops so I've got one two three four five on this side one two three four five six now I've done one two three four five so I need to make one two three four I just need to make one more to make a match And I think that should be about it. Just count that and see. Yes, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, there's two ways to finish this off. <coughs> now, oh, thank you, Lourdes. Is it Lourdes? Is that how you say your name? I'm sorry if I'm saying it wrong, but thank you. Um, it's nice to see me teaching for a change. I'm actually making more mistakes than I've ever done in my life today, but never mind. Um, okay, there's two ways to finish. You can do it like these ones here, which, here we go. You can see they've just been finished off with some glue. You can't use um, a zapper with this or burn the ends because it's such a strong fibrous uh, material. You can't burn it, I'm afraid. It's it's not doesn't melt plasticky. Uh, but what you can do is you can glue it. Or if you don't want to glue, I'm just trying to find another one. You can do it like this one and you can just do not here so I'll show you both methods uh, the first method with glue is literally all you do is pull it back on itself so go forward pull it back on itself and loosen loosen off the last um, uh, the last uh, knot oh we've got Helena from Sweden uh, welcome um, and you just put a little bit of glue inside of here I'm not going to do it today um, maybe a little bit of uh, to, to be honest with you, super glue is fine. I know the stuff's absolutely evil, but it's nice because it does soak in. And you uh, glue up both of the sides here, so that, and then in the middle, so that when you pull it tight, um, you will have glue also coming out here and here. So then it becomes quite hard, and you can trim it really, really close when that's dry. So that's the first way to do it. The other way to do it, of course is you just use all four of your cords if you want to bring them together and then just make an overhand knot so you just loop it around so that you have a loop bring the thread through it's a little bit fiddly with all four threads but not impossible keep your finger in the loop so that you can bring it up to where you want it 
and then just take your time and maneuver it over so that then you can pull it up nice and tight and you have um, a knot if you want. Now I'm not going to pull that tight because I'm just going to undo it now because I actually prefer personally the neat and tidiness of um, of cutting off the thread. The other reason why I like to do it that way is because then I've gotten rid of these two threads. They're gone. Oh, Sean says a fantastic demo. Oh, thank you. That's so that's so nice of you, considering I've um, been making, um, I've had a hell of a time um, with all my threads getting caught. Um, so once we've glued these and we'll pretend they're gone, they're over there, uh, then what, we, what you're left with is just two cords, which I rather like because it's a little bit neater and tidier if you see whereas when you do not the all you've got double thread which there's nothing wrong with that and what you could always do too is you could always twist these together uh, but the next thing we want to do is just a simple knot here now we just need to leave enough space for our button so about that is enough now what you can do if you want to like the one I'm wearing is you can do I'll just bring this in here you can do a series of knots and then that way especially if you're selling them you you know because you can put your button here or here and you can extend this length quite a lot and um, it means that if you are selling them that they're, they're multi-sized as well so or if you're feeling you want it a bit firmer I really like my bracelets sort of very very loose um, but if you feel you want it a little firmer you can then wear it a bit tighter if you want so you could also do that now you can see when I said to you one and a half meters you can see how much thread I still have left there's a lot of thread here so you don't really need one and a half meters I tell you that much and even with the um, with the thread on the needle I tell you about two meters um, Christine has asked for the US price uh, the kit is $14 for one you know that's today's rate it can change or for and if you buy three of them it's just over $30 for the three and of course our postage uh, to the US is fixed postage so regardless if you buy one the postage is 650 but if you buy three the postage is still 650 or if you buy 10 the postage is still 650 uh, now you can buy 10 if you want <laughs> um, now I would be happy if you bought 10 <laughs> sorry okay so back to this so we've decided we want to put our knot here so it's nice and easy and I'll show you how to do it here we go I usually put my fingers here where I want my knot to be and then I just use my fingers and just turn over here and make a loop like that then I just bring the ends through like so and then just slowly, slowly, now if you keep your finger inside the loop, then it'll move and it won't, you can, you know, keep it doing it and undoing it as much as you want to. And you can just slowly work that knot up to where you want it to be. Slowly, slowly. And just take your time. Now once you can check it and then you think, yep, I'm happy with that. And then you can pull it nice and tight you might have to pull on one and the other there we go so then we've got a nice knot in the space that we wanted now then all that's left to do is separate these two little cords now again when i finish i'll put a little drop of super glue on there just to keep it because as you have as you do know you know because you can undo this thread easily i put a little drop of super glue on there or whatever your glue of preference is then i'm just going to put some little knots just like i've done here on the ends to make it look a bit neat and tidy um so i say okay i want it there so again up and through bring it up keep your finger in the loop 
bring it up slowly, 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 slowly. I've got one and then the other one. Now that's there, so I want to hold it here. Again, just make a loop with your fingers, come through the loop and then slowly bring it up. It's like a lasso. Now before I actually tighten it, I'm going to check that it's where I want it to be. If I want it up a little bit higher, it looks good. Then I can pull it tight and then I've got two in the same posse and that's all done. And there we are. So I'll just come in a little bit closer so you can actually see that. So now all that's left, all that's left to do now is I drop a, a drop of glue here and here and here. And you can put a little bit uh, down here and on both sides. And then when it's rock hard dry, you can just trim it off. And that is how you make your bracelet. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I'll just uh, come up to the front so you can see me. Can you help me with that, yep. Andrew? Yep. Um. <laughs> Sorry, it won't be a second. But I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you do, please don't forget to share and su subscribe because it's it's really great. We're a great community and I feel that, you know, there's a lot of us that uh, enjoy our time beading together and doing things together. So for me, the more people that know about things, the better. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. So just to recap on all the bits and pieces that we've done. You've got the um, waterfall uh, earring set on sale until Sunday night. So uh, you've got the Atlantis set on fantastic sale. And don't forget, if you do buy one, you get the uh, 16 patterns to go with it for free. It's a download. Um, and so now I can tell you about what's happening next week. Matthew will be back. You'll probably all be pleased about that. Um, and he's going to show you the Tree of Life uh, pendant and necklace set. Now, in that, we're going to be using these beautiful, if I come in a little bit closer, these beautiful, um, these are a six mil faceted, crystal Linny asks what did what you did in the class all those years ago um well actually it was a netted necklace and i really loved it that's why i stayed and i enjoyed it so much it was just simple seed bead netting uh and i think i made about a half a dozen of them i absolutely enjoyed it and i was hooked uh but then luckily later on i happened um to to meet and you know some other people and and I, I just started you know continuing to learn and I actually um, started making my own lamp work beads and that really got me on the journey because I needed to I had all these fabulous beads that I needed to do, learn to do things with and from there I went from bead weaving and then we went on to um, you know stringing and wire work and I was doing silver clay I've done it all I've done silver smithing um, and then finally I don't know if any of you know but I actually edited Australia's first beading magazine and um, I was the founding editor for that uh, and I did that for quite some years so and now here you have it so anyway um, what was I saying um, Sean really enjoyed it thank you very much um, yes yeah, so Next week, Matthew will be back on um, Friday at 1 p.m. English time. And he will be showing you uh, the beautiful Tree of Life uh, necklace and bracelet set. And um, using these gorgeous faceted 6 mil crystal cubes. A lot of people don't know what to do with cubes. So it's a really lovely set. And... Um, 
I've also going to, I've designed a new colorway as well. So that will be coming out in the next few days. So um, that's what's happening. It's the Tree of Life pendant and it's a beautiful necklace and bracelet and very versatile actually. Um, I think there's a few more people with messages here. Um, yes, yeah, Sean said he enjoyed it. Oh, thank you. He, he, he had it when things went wrong and how to overcome them. Yes, with stress. <laughs> Never mind. Um, no, the board doesn't come. Christine is asking, does the board come with the kit? No, because you don't need to use the board. You can purchase them. Um, I think we're out of them on our website at the moment, unfortunately. But as I said, you can just use your beading mat. If you've got an old loom or a loom at home, you could also attach it to your loom to do this. Or as I said um, earlier on, the other thing you could do is... Um, um, you, if you've got an old picture frame, like, you know, one about yay big, and you could just use the frame part of it, and you could use bulldog clips either side of it and suspend your bracelet across from that. So, um, you know, you can be as creative <laughs> as you as you like, really. Um, yes, or you could even use a clipboard if you've got a clipboard. So um, Sharon's saying thank you, enjoy the weekend. Thank you, Sharon, for coming and everyone else and um and i hope you all have a lovely restful sunday and um don't forget to send in pictures people did send in quite a few pictures today but um matthew will be showing um matthew said so show the end pictures there are five. Oh, we've got five pictures oh i didn't realize oh let's have a look oh this is fun okay so we've got a uh, Colleen with her um, Peyote Bugle braces. I love those colours, Colleen. They're really nice. And we've saw Carol's before and uh, we saw Colleen Rose ones before, I think, didn't we? Ah, here's one from Patricia. Ah, from New York, is that? Brooklyn, New York. Um, um, she worked, I just worked with what beads I had in my who sorry it's a bit far away for me to read um that's lovely that's really lovely it's very nice bracelet i love those colors and uh, oh that's it <laughs> that's all the photos so um are there any more photos matthew sure. you know this is what happened when you let the boys just run all the technology i have no idea about technology whatsoever and i just leave it up to them so i'm, I'm afraid we're at their mercy everybody but um, okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Did you enjoy the tutorial? I hope it wasn't too flustery and bad, but um, um, I think all the links for everything you need are in the description boxes. Please subscribe if you like our channel. And um, I think all that's left to say is enjoy your Sunday. And um, well, I won't see you next time, uh, but maybe, Maybe I will come back another time if you don't mind. But um, it will be Matthew next Friday with the lovely Tree of Life necklace. So bye and thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.